Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are taking a look at the second course at the University of Mobile that is being used for an upcoming tournament called the Ram Rumble. Now, this course will eventually become a permanent course, or at least some of the holes will be, as their mission is to have a second course permanently put in place, to have two different options whenever you play here at the University of Mobile. So this temp course will feature some of those permanent holes that they hope to use for the second course down the line. But then there are just some temporary holes that are used just for the tournament to fill gaps and things of that nature while they still take care of landscaping and construction and all that jazz to get this second course up and running. But I wanted to film this video to show off these holes because maybe not a lot of people have seen the second course. Um, we are also using the original course for the tournament as well. But that course is about the same as it's always been. There's been, I think, three changes, which I might show at the end of this video, just to help some folks out. But uh, this course definitely uh, has some similarities to last year if you played it, um, but there are some changes. But this first hole is a permanent hole. It's hole one, 470 through the tunnel. There's a red tee that's a little bit shorter, makes it maybe 370, but uh, still a tough opening hole. All right, so slight correction for hole one. Everyone's actually going to tee off from the white tee, 470 feet. For AMs, the hole plays as a par four. For pros, the hole plays as a par three. And the orange flags you see up there are actually a drop zone if you miss the mando. And the mando is just the tree on the right-hand side. It has a white M painted on it. So you got to go through the tunnel. You can't go big highs or over the road or something like that. And then, yeah, like I said, it plays as a par four for AMs and a par three for pros. 470 feet, uh, slightly downhill, but definitely a pretty tight gap off the tee. And even once you get out there, who really knows what you're going to be left with? It's, uh, it's definitely fairly wooded. I think this course is intended to be a little bit more wooded than the original course. And it's also intended to be a little bit harder um, is what the goal is, I think. There you go. Halo S. Glen Maya. Just try to get it up there. Maybe get some turn to the right. With it being a par four, I'm just trying to make some progress and just make sure I get through this gap. Not really trying to go for anything crazy. I thought that was looking really good and then it just kicked a random tree. <laughs> Still not bad though. Probably got like 270 up there or something. That's a great shot from Dave. Dead center cut. There's just so many random trees up there you can hit. I mean, obviously, if you throw it as straight as humanly possible, you can just track all the way to the basket, but it's so hard to keep it straight for that long. I mean, I made the mando when I got out there. So that's where my first just landed, the Halo Maya. It's about 180 feet from the basket with a dead straight gap, kind of staying in the middle of the fairway. Obviously, right side of the fairway, you got some trees to tango with if you overturn one or throw a forehand or something like that if you're a righty. Now, I imagine a lot of people are going to drift out left over there. So my other disc, my sword, and my dynasty actually went the same distance as the Maya, but just more left. And I'll kind of show you what that lie looks like because I have a feeling a lot of people are going to get through the gap and kind of hyzer out left, which is going to kind of put you near hole two's fairway, actually. A little too much speed on it, but not bad. Now, here's where my other disc went that kind of went left. You can see the two lies right there, kind of at the bottom of the screen. It kind of leaves you a similar, like, dead straight shot at the basket or you know, maybe some type of flex backhand, I guess, if you want to throw something overstable to get through the center gap, but then kind of just have it hyzer in. But it really is just more of a dead straight shot. And it's essentially the same distance, like that, you know, 180 mark, basically, or just under 200 feet. So I'm gonna kind of throw from that pine cone, kind of in between the two lies to show you. Obviously, if you get caught up on the tree, then life gets trickier for sure. See if we can scare Dave. Never mind, he turned around. Too deep. Way too deep. Oh God. All right. All right, so now we're on another permanent hole that's gonna be on the second course going forward. And this is the second hole, obviously. It's uh, 340 feet, slightly uphill. You're kind of playing back up the hill you play down for the hole we just played. 
And uh, this is a tough one to get. I mean, I really feel like obviously you have to get through this initial gap off the front of the tee, but then your options are really to kind of either just play as straight of a backhand as you can, just play for par. You could also, in theory, maybe flex something through the center gap and then have it kind of fight back left once it gets past those middle trees. Or you could play some type of flex forehand kind of left side of that center tree and maybe have it hyzer back in and skip up. This is one of those holes where I'm playing it for par, more than likely, just gonna throw a fairway or something, maybe a control driver. Just try to give myself like a short up shot for par. It's really hard to birdie this hole with just how tight it is and the fact that it's 340 uphill. A little out of my range. So we're gonna go with that Halo Maya again, just throw something kind of dead straight. Or go through the right gap, that works too. Yeah, it's like an easy up and down for par from there probably. Great shot from Dave. Hyzer flip right up the gut, up the center the whole way. Perfect. It's a great shot. I don't think we're going to see a lot of birdies on this hole from below MA1. And even then, I don't think it's going to be a birdie fest for like higher level players. I think there's a lot of trees you can get caught up on, even if you peer the first gap. Yeah, I mean, that's all I really want on this hole. Again, you can try to go bigger with something higher. Maybe like have a turn right that flex out left at the end, or like I said, flex forehand maybe, but that's good enough for me. Real quick, so you don't get confused after you play hole two, which is right there, you do not go straight to this tee. I think this is like hole four or five on the layout to that blue basket down there. So we're gonna see this hole later. What you're gonna wanna do is walk down this power line tunnel. That's where you're gonna find hole number three. All right, so now we're on hole three on the layout when you walk down the power lines, tee's right in front of you. You got this power pole right in front of you dead center. It kind of creates this weird John Halk design almost type deal that you would see at the Admiral. Uh, it's about 280 feet. You can see the blue basket down there. Uh, so basically a dual option. You can either go right side of the power pole and fade something in, or you can go left side of the power pole and maybe try to do some type of, it doesn't really shape for a forehand at all. So I feel like if you go left side, you're kind of playing flex backhand as a righty. If you play right side of the pole, you're just trying to play something kind of dead straight and then have it gently fade left. Um, definitely a tough hole with a pole literally right in the center of you. I've never been a fan of things literally dead center of the fairway, but you know, it is what it is. It's my first time looking at this hole or playing it, so it should be fun. That's what I was trying to do. I don't think I pushed it forward enough, but... Almost turned it a little bit too right into the wood line, right? But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It keeps you in the center of the fairway and gets you up there. It just makes it a tough birdie. I'll try left side real quick. Like here, you kind of want something maybe a little more under uh, overstable that you kind of put on a slight ante or something, kind of flex it, baby, little baby flex, maybe. Uh. I still don't know if that's forward enough. All right, so Dave came up a touch short with the green disc, but still not bad. Did you see your second one? Right, there was either. right next to it, so consistency is good. Uh, the first shot I threw was. Uh, Maybe edge of circle one might be like right on the fringe. I don't know. I didn't quite get enough distance on it Like I said today, I'm just not I'm not feeling like I'm getting a lot of explosiveness One of those slow just sluggish days But the second shot I threw and I may have almost aced the thing <laughs> It's pretty much uh Parked on this left side for an easy birdie. This is a longer birdie plus for sure Yeah, I would say this is circle one. I'd say it's like 28 feet or so, 25. There we go. All right, so after the last hole, there's like a little walking trail you kind of walk down. 
I guess if you're facing the basket from the T-pad, it'd be to your right. If you're facing from the basket, looking back towards the T-pad, it'd be to your left. And it cuts you over to this like little small tunnel shot, hole four, it's just under 200 feet. It's just one of those like gauntlet tunnel type shots that seemingly almost every wooded course has at some point. And uh, the basket is actually right off to the left, up there to the left. I'm trying to do my best to show you where it is. I don't have like a nice stabilizer for my phone here. We're just kind of walking up the fairway. So sorry for the bouncing around. But I'm trying to get an idea of where the actual basket is. I know it's cut into the left somewhere here, up the fairway. Just like a little divot on the left. Here, there you go. You can see the basket now on top of it. So essentially you want to throw something dead straight that has a little bit of fade, but you don't want to fade too early. You just kind of kind of beat these little last trees to get into this little divot cut in. So we'll head back to the tee pad now. Looks like I threw that just a little low and short, but it may have like slid up and giving me a look at the basket. I don't know. It's hard to commit to something powerful <laughs> through this thing. Yeah, see, I was thinking about that. I kind of like like a high like spike. I think that might be short though, the only problem. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of just aiming something up high and letting it stall crash in. It's like it's right next to where it is. That's too overstable. We may never see that again. All right, so we're looking at my dead straight shot is the one closest to the camera, the Simon Lazat proxy. And then my Eagle Envy that I threw on the higher spike line just went a little bit further. All right, so now you kind of go back up that power line route and come back to that hole I was talking about earlier that I told you to skip past after you played hole two. And now this is hole five. Blue basket's down there, about 270 feet, but it plays really downhill, so it definitely plays shorter than a 270. You kind of have multiple options on this hole. I think the option last year I went for, which worked out pretty well for me, was I just played a backhand kind of to the right of that center bush and let it just skip left to the basket. But there's also certainly a wide open left side. If you're like a lefty backhand or righty forehand, you definitely have that option as well. Um, yeah, again, you don't really need to throw anything too fast because it plays so downhill. I think mid range for me kind of works or maybe like a seven speed or something like that if I want to play the skip. Um, I'm gonna go Iron Samurai four first. Play this right side. That's tough. That was good. That was, that was like literally everything I could ever have wanted, and then I must have faded like just a tick too fast and caught like one of the last trees in the center. That was that was looking for the basket though. Not an ace, but like just part. So there it goes even wider. So that's what I was trying to do. That's part, pretty much. That's it. That's too straight. No, that's it. Nope, straight. All right, so there's my first backhand. Just caught this tree. Just didn't quite push it forward enough. So it's deep a circle two. There's Dave's cax. It's kind of between a mid and a fairway. He pretty much parked it. My pathfinder, I got the distance, but it was just too straight. It didn't fade left enough. So if I'd have thrown my iron center my four on the same line as that pathfinder, I would have been good to go. All right, so now we're at hole six. It's a blind shot, dog leg to the left. The literal distance, I think, is 360 feet, but it definitely plays longer than that because you have to go pretty hard left to get to the basket, maybe get some good ground action. I usually just kind of aim for the bush, kind of out there near the center of the screen, and then have something kind of fade over the top of that. That's kind of my goal on this hole. This is another hole where I'm pretty much playing for, for par. I just don't quite have enough distance to get it forward and left enough. Last year, I actually threw it too deep forward and got stuck in some trees and was screwed. <laughs> I'm 
little too low. Just skips though. Nothing wrong with that. It's going to be an easy up and down for par. Like I said, if you're playing this hole for par, you don't really have to do a whole lot of work off the tee. As long as you can throw something dead straight, like 250 feet, it's going to be a pretty easy upshot for par. That's a beautiful shot from Dave. Got some good skips left, too. He might have, like, a long jump putt at it or something. <laughs> now, I use the word jump putt very loosely when I talk about Dave, because I don't know if Dave's ever jump putted in his life. But to me, a jump putt's like 80 to 100 feet. Something like that. Circle three. All right, something a little more understable on hyzer. It's going to glide left more, so it's more understable. But still, I don't think that's any different than your Raider. That your yellow disc you just threw, I think that's pretty much the same spot. Right. Got the decent distance, though. All right, so that's where my first shot landed. Pretty easy up shot to the basket. The Maya, I threw more understable on Heiser. It glided closer to the basket, so even shorter up shot. And then Dave's Raider was kind of even with that over there to the right of my Maya. Very similar shot. And then my Emperor, I just pushed it way too far outside. So all of them, though, are like pretty reasonable little chip shots or par again it's really hard to get left enough on this hole like that maya was the closest bet i had if i could have got me like a crazy skip or something maybe that ought to do All right, so now we're on hole seven, which was one of the temp holes we did use last year where they did move the tee a substantial amount, so it definitely plays a lot different. Uh, it's only about 260 feet. You can see the basket down there peeking through. And so really the options you're kind of left with off the tee are you can kind of throw a forehand just to the left of this uh, big bushy tree area and just try to play like a forehand that hides towards the basket through the left-hand side. Or you can go straight through this gap I'm zooming through on the right-hand side, get through that gap, and then kind of start trickling left as you get through it towards the basket. So another dual option hole. All right, it's time to throw. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do. The forehand, for some reason, seems more attractive, but... skinnier gap though unless you go like super wide left spike hides are forehand that's probably not gonna get there i think you're failing backhand and spike through the middle no i kind of i want to try the forehand first mm -hmm. want to see how it feels i mean i like that yeah that's a good thing i don't think it pushed forward enough So this is where my forehand landed. I had enough push, but did not get right enough. So that's like deep circle two. Another one of my discs, I think it's the first, the backhand I threw is behind that tree deep of the basket. Still circle one though, maybe edge circle one. All right, so now we're on a hole eight, which is a bit of a doozy for me as an MA2 player, because we're playing the same tees as the pros, and this is a par three. It's an island hole. You can't really see the island from here, but it's basically just a giant grass circle that kind of plays like a little traffic loop thing. Uh, the basket itself off the tee is 385-ish. The black sign on the front side of the green is about 365, 360. 
I think you do need to throw it about 365 feet to make it on like the front edge of the green. And that's just barely making it. If you want to really make it probably at least 370. If you go OB off the tee, which would be just any of the cement surrounding the island or the road to the right, then you progress to the short tee, the red tee. And then if you don't get inbounds from there, then you progress to a drop zone. So it's kind of like a multi-tiered system. You do have the option to lay up short of the green. Uh, there's like a little bit of a gap between like the road, of uh, like the road on this side of the fairway and then the actual island. So you definitely have the option to like throw a shot maybe somewhere just past the red tee and just kind of lay up, lay up and take par, which is probably 100% what I want to do because I don't think I can throw it 360 feet to that island. Um, there's just no way, especially if it's even just like the hint windy. Because 360 is like my absolute, like, if everything goes perfect, max distance. So, yeah, I don't don't foresee me going for it. I foresee me throwing some type of layup shot. Um, so, yeah, really my goal is I'm just going to try to maybe get 275-ish feet of progress up the fairway, stay out of the road to the right, give myself a chance to pitch up for par. That's the play for me. to lay up somewhere between the red tee and the drop zone there's a little bit of a dip down there i'll throw a couple more just because i kind of want to see i might be able to throw like a fairway driver and just get like more distance but still be short of the ob before the island and give myself like a shorter approach shot to the par because the worst thing you could do here is lay up and then lay up really short and then have like a really tricky approach shot to the green that still counts as an island from that point That might be too aggressive. No, I, mean, I think that's actually really good. Yeah. All right, so this is the red tee, which will be what uh, like MA3, MA50, like female divisions and other amateur divisions play. It's uh, about 275 to the basket. It's probably about 250 to 255 to get onto the green. This starts as the first drop zone. If you play for the white tee and you don't, you go out of bounds off the tee basically. Should be good from Dave. Yeah. That is part, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's where my first layup shot landed off the white tee. It left me about about 170 from the basket. Brought this tree into play though. So I think the play is actually to play more towards the right side of the fairway. Maybe bring the road a little bit more into play on like a hyzer and just kind of spike in that way your center fairway and you don't have to worry about any obstructions. It's already nervy enough having to land on an island, but uh, adding the complications of having to bend something around this tree just makes it even more tough. But yeah. All right, so here was the quote unquote more aggressive layup. This is like a seven speed fairway driver I threw. And this one is about like right at a hundred feet from the basket. So I threw it about 280 or so, like right what I was looking for. And I still have plenty of space. I think you have to throw a shot probably at least, I would say three, 40 ish to actually land in the out of bounds road like past the drop zone short of the island and then that's the actual drop zone up there to the left so that would be the th third place you go if you go ob off the white tee and ob off the red tee if you're an am you go ob off the red tee you go straight to that drop zone right there that's flagged by that wooden stake and it's pretty much like a 
I don't know, like a 70 footer or something. Very easy to get up and down from there. All right, so now we're on hole nine, 250 feet, little wooded tunnel shot right off the tee. You got a gap you got to hit probably about 80 to 100 feet off the tee. And then, yeah, that's, that's the show. Just your classic little wooded gauntlet hole. But you can't cheat this one. You really do just have to throw it straight through. There's really no... Yeah, there's, there's really no way to cheat this hole. You kind of just have to throw it through the center and hope for the best. Unlike that little 200 foot hole we played in the woods earlier where you kind of cheat with like a little high hyzer. Don't really have that option on this one and it's a little longer. Not too low. Not a par though. I just threw it too low. I hit the tree like just before the basket and it got kicked way left. So that's another part. That'll par. All right, so this is the first one I threw that I just threw too low. So it came up well short. So just kind of a chip up for par. Actually, I found the low path finder. It's right there, pin high, circle one, probably like a 20-ish foot putt for birdie, so. Did better than I thought. Right, so this is hole 10, blind shot. You kind of have to go through this gap. You can kind of go maybe a little high over the right side of the gap and still get through. But it's a little bit of a dog leg left. If I step over here, you can actually see the blue basket down there. It's probably a similar distance to the hole we just played about somewhere between 200 and 250 feet. So that is hole 10. Might be too much high there. Yeah, I kind of over, overcompensated. I was trying to make sure I didn't push too straight and I wound up putting way too much hyzer on it. Pretty good shot from Dave. Good line. Short. Short. Let me go Iron Samurai 4. Over Salem. Slightly over Salem 8, I should say. See if I can. See, that's that pushing two straight I was talking about, catching one of those trees. That's like a super long circle two, maybe, maybe not even circle two, might be longer than that. That's good. I think. I'll try throwing something a little faster, but just not throw it as hard and just see if I can get like a skip left after I throw it kind of straight. Like my overstable explorer just thrown down tempo try to get like a little flex out of it so the envy i threw first actually was totally fine it's like circle one it pushed forward enough it didn't get in the woods or anything it's good the down tempo fairway driver i threw last also right next to the basket good iron samurai hit the tree that came up short this is day i think this is his first throw with the cax circle two he threw a was that the eagle over there on the right that one's like perfect that rocky area by the way is not ob the only ob on this hole is if you push it deep all the way into the road so don't worry about that highlight putt nearly all right so now we're on hole 11 yes hole 11 um we may be teeing off the road as i have the camera pointed but there's also a chance they may move the tee left onto the grassy area not really sure from this white tee the basket's up there somewhere between 360 and 380 feet Basically, uh, the road plays is out of bounds. And if you go OB off of this first tee, you advance to the red tee. If you keep going OB from the red tee, you, you have to keep throwing from there like bunker rules almost, I think. So that's kind of how this is set up. So I can't throw it 380. So my only goal really is just to kind of hammer something as far as I can get and actually just make sure I get in bounds. And then kind of go from there the only thing is, is you don't like the thing is you want to stay out of the road you want to be in bounds you want to be on the left side we're kind of teeing off from out of bounds in that regard if we do tee off from the road but if you go too far left to play too safe then you wind up in the woods and you have a really 
really tough approach shot. So I'm kind of playing this hole for par, but even to play it for par, I have to get pretty aggressive to make sure I stay out of the woods to have a clean approach shot. exactly where I want to be. I'm still on kind of the flat ground, not in the woods west. I should have like a little backhand hyzer approach shot. Yeah, good. Ooh, that wasn't bad. That's a really easy approach shot. All right, so this is the red tee for the hole or the drop zone if you go OB off the white tee. And it's 265 to the basket from here. Perfect. That's a bird. Probably. All right, so now we're at hole 12, pretty much a dead straight 300 foot shot, a little bit of a low ceiling, especially on the left side of the fairway. You got some kind of overhanging branches you got to worry about. Really, it shapes nicely for just a dead straight backhand, but I also think it shapes up really nicely for a flex forehand as well, if you've got it as a right-handed player, um, just to kind of stay underneath the low ceiling, flex it out past those trees and have it skip back right, I think is a good play as well. But uh, we'll kind of give it all a shot. Left. Dave was just showing you guys an alternate back door right route. Kind of did it. Got some great ground action. That's kind of kind of what I was talking about. Flex forehand. All right, so now we're on hole 13, about 215, slightly downhill, tunnel shot. Basket for this is just right across the road from the hole we just played. So you kind of have to walk across the road and walk up the hill to play this hole. It's your classic tunnel shot, really. Lucky. Never belittle the shot in the middle. I'm not belittling it, I'm just saying I got lucky, which is a fact. That should have stayed in the woods right, probably. That's a great shot. That's a All right, so now we're on hole 14, 300 feet, dead straight ahead. Got a center gap, you got to hit a little bit of a low thing on the left side of the center gap. You could also go wide left with like some type of skippy forehand and probably do pretty well for yourself as long as you keep it low enough. So, a couple different options. It looks so much further than 300 feet for some reason to me, I don't know why. Yeah. I missed that, I'm golden. They've hit the same tree. All right, so now we're on hole 15 on tip layout. It's a new hole this year. It is ridiculous. Uh, it is like a almost 700 foot par four, huge dog leg right. I believe there's two mandos on this hole. The first mando is that magnolia tree, dead center of your screen. You can actually see um, like orange flags at it as a drop zone in case you miss it. And then once you get around that tree, then you're kind of just playing up the road straight forward. And uh, yeah, this thing's a monster. It's a beautiful tee shot from Dave. That's really good.
Yeah, but I'm still like short of the Mando. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna move on. All right, so here's where my drive landed. That Magnolia right there is the Mando, just to the left of the Lexus. There's actually, the TDs out here uh, flagging off the Mando area as so I back this up. And so pretty much from this angle, all I can really do is just throw a forehand kind of over the road and try to set myself up for a par approach shot on the, the third shot. It's about the best I can hope for. All right, so this is where our second shots landed. Uh, you can see the two orange flags on the right-hand side of the screen. That pine tree to the right of those flags is the second Mando on this hole that you have to say to the left of, and that's the drop zone if you miss that Mando. We're about 200 feet from the basket from where we're at, so you can either play something over the road or kind of dead straight at the basket, or you can try to play something between the gap. Between those two pines, that's past the Mando tree. It's like a little backhand shot or something. So you kind of got your options open to you. All right, so now we're on hole 16 on the temp layout. This is a new hole. It kind of plays down from the next tee pad. So the original course hole 16, and now the new course is 17, is that tee pad I'm kind of pointing at. You kind of walk down to this little corner here and play this hole first. It's a blind dog leg right, um, 280-ish feet. You can play a forehand, but I feel like it hyzers really hard right if you do that, and you can wind up in the woods on the right-hand side. It seems like it's asking you to play like a nice, slow, panning backhand turnover for a right-handed player if you want to have like the best chance at scoring on the hole. That's what it seems like it's asking you to do. Not to say that you can't play a forehand as a righty. Like, you totally could just stand up here, play a forehand, but you're probably not going to push forward enough to get birdie. It's probably a par play at that point. It's like my most understable disc and it still didn't turn right enough. That's a nice safe shot, I think, for this hole. Yeah. By the way, here is the fairway. Once you get around the corner, you can see the basket's kind of tucked down there to the right. So yeah, I think forehand is like a play that'll definitely get you par, but unless it's like a perfect flip up forehand that kind of dances along the left hand side of the fairway then fades right at the end i think it's a very hard shot to accomplish with the forehand to get a birdie i do think it kind of plays more for a backhand turnover for a right-handed player try to aim it at the left tree wall have it turn hard and then maybe pan out at the very end towards the basket or something for lefties maybe just a slow turn in backhand i'm not really sure or like some kind of crazy flex forehand on a ton of anhyzer that flags out at the end but uh i don't know much about lefty shots so there you go that's this hole all right, so now we're on hole 17 on the temp layout. This is essentially the original hole 16 on the first course here. It's now being transferred over to the new course and they're making some changes to the, the main course to accommodate this. This is a par four, about 550, plays a little bit uphill as well. So it's a pretty long 550, probably plays closer to 600 feet. Um, don't wanna be early left, that's jail. You're pretty much wasting a shot getting out from there, but obviously you have the OB road to the right that you're trying to you know navigate so you got to be careful there too so you kind of want to test the road on something on hyzer then skip and kind of stay right side of the fairway yeah. kind of tested that curb a little bit more than i wanted to but that's the spot you want to be all right, here's my lie right here off the tee. I'm about two, between 270 and 280 from the basket. But uh, being over center or to the right kind of gives you the big hyzer over the road again to approach the basket. Whereas if you're more left, then you have to hit some trickier gap shots to approach the basket. So it can be done, but it makes it definitely more difficult.
All right, Esplan Emperor off the tee, Halo Aztec for the approach, and now I'll try to birdie butt. Nothing felt good about that putt at all. Oh well. All right, so now we're on the final hole here, this layout, hole 18, a very treacherous ending hole. It is 600-ish feet. It uh, is a par four from the white tee for pros. There is a red tee kind of down the fairway by that center power pole. It places a par three from there. So like MA3, MA50, maybe even MA40, I'm not sure. MA4, female divisions will probably play from that tee if they play this tournament. Um, there's a big slope right to the left and it does play downhill on top of that. The basket is actually way down there. You see that bending power pole with the transformer on it. The basket's kind of even with that, but left. And like I said, it plays about 600 feet. So yeah, it's a tricky one. It's pretty though, I'll say that. Like aesthetically, this hole is pretty cool. But uh, man, is it not gonna be hard to even par it. I think it's gonna be very hard. You don't want to be in the woods. That's for sure. Honestly, a forehand that plays into the plays into the slope for a righty might be the ideal like setup play instead of a backhand that drifts too far left. I don't know. I'm just gonna throw a disc. If I would have started that one right side, yeah. it would be money. It turned all right, but then it faded too hard at the end. I do want to try one forehand. Huh? Yeah, short, but a good placement probably. All right, now here's the hole from the red tee. It probably plays about 340 feet as a par three. Kind of just want to aim for that leaning power pole, try to get through that gap, get a little bit of gentle fade left. Um, but just want to kind of give you an idea of what the hole looked like from the short tee. All right, so I kind of filled it to the left-hand side of the fairway. You can see there in the corner, both my discs are kind of in the same spot. So I really don't have much of anything I can do but like a standstill and just try to pitch into a good spot. Might even have to go like big o big forehand, honestly. I don't even know if I can backhand from here. Yeah, not really. Just gonna have to do a scramble forehand. Watch out, Dave. About the best I could hope for from here. So there's that big green splotch on the corner and then here's the actual gap up to the basket you can kind of see it's tucked in back there so very tough hole to get to. We'll try to see where my forehand I think my forehand landed right in the mouth of the gap right there. Yeah. So see if we can pitch up from there and get a par. That's one option, just kind of playing hyzer up around this corner, like that. The other option that's kind of going more direct, like maybe slide in here, like that. We'll get up there and look. All right, so my phone died, so we're borrowing Dave's phone real quick to finish off the round, as Dave did pretty well in this hole. As for me, my first approach shot landed right here, so well within circle one to put the basket. And as you can see, the other two landed right next to the basket. So all the approaches went pretty well, so I was able to par this hole. But that's going to do it. Hope you folks enjoyed the video. I'm not really going to film a full outro because my phone's dead and we're kind of need to get out of here. But I uh, hope you folks enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful if you're playing this course for the tournament. And catch you next time.